Hello and welcome to another Spass Kangaroo tutorial. Today we're going to be starting a course on learning to program in Lua. So this course is going to be a prerequisite course uh, to another course that I'm planning and that's going to be uh, how to write games. So writing games requires uh, knowledge of programming. This isn't going to be specifically about game programming. I'm just going to do a general overview. Uh, so this is a good starting point if you're just interested in programming in general. But uh, this is just the, the main reason I'm making this course is so uh, I can get you started on how to make games. So why should you learn to program? Um, as I stated before, it's so you can make games. Programming is a necessary prerequisite if you're going to write games. There are some visual game engines out there. They don't work right. You really need to learn to code if you're going to write a game. Computers are very good at automation, but you need to know how to program uh, to do some things that aren't really easy to do with most uh, GUIs and stuff. So learning to program will allow you to write uh, scripts and programs that will do work for you that's mundane and annoying and s slow and is prone to human error. Um, and it'll do it really, really fast and it'll do it correctly. So that's a great reason to learn to program. Uh, next up, programming allows you to uh, practice your problem solving skills. Every time you write a program, you're writing it to solve some sort of problem. Programming is a great way to practice your problem solving skills. Uh, it's a great way to help you improve your problem solving skills, uh, especially if you use a computer a lot. Um, there are plenty of problems with computers and learning to program will allow you to solve some of those. If you like puzzles, you'll like programming. Programming also gives you a deeper understanding of how computer works. And this may not sound that important, but considering computers are literally everywhere, it's, an, it's important to understand what's going on behind the scenes. And programming will allow you to understand why computers do what they do. It'll help you understand why computers are stupid in many cases. And it will help you to understand what is causing it to mess up. A more practical reason is because there are a lot of programming jobs, and programming is actually one of the highest paying jobs that doesn't necessarily require a degree. Uh, you don't need a degree in, pro in computer science or computer engineering to get a job. You just need to know how to program. And it's, it's like literally one of the highest paying jobs other than medical. Like I think it is the highest paying job other than like medical jobs. Um, those all require years and years of school and uh, they, they, school's expensive too, so learning to program helps you bypass all that and just get a job. Um, and finally, programming is fun. I mean, I sit here at a computer and spend hours a day programming little scripts for fun. Um, like literally, I just do it for fun because I enjoy programming. And like I said before, if you like problem solving, if you need to automate something, um, you, you will like programming. So uh, let's get on to what we're going to be learning in this course. So we're going to be learning Lua and I pick Lua uh, because it's a small language, it has simple syntax, and the Love2D engine, which is the engine we're going to eventually be using, uses Lua to uh, write games. So um, we're just going to get on from here. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining w what Lua does because I like I don't like long slideshows and I just want to get to practical uses now. So we'll be back in a minute and I'll be explaining how to use Lua. So the first thing you're going to need to do is install Lua. Um, so if you are on Windows, what you're going to do is go to lua.org slash download.html. Um, that's just lua.org. And then there's the download page once you get there. Um, and then you're just going to go to the binary section. So you don't have to build Lua from source. Uh, so click get a binary. And then scroll to the bottom and select Windows. Uh, I think you're going to probably want this one. Um, and then just go to download. And download the Windows uh, binary file for whichever version of Windows you have, either 32 or 64-bit. Um, and if you're on Mac OS X, you can do the same, or you can do uh, something slightly different, and that's install it from the command line, which I personally prefer. So go ahead and open a terminal, which can be accessed from the utilities uh, section. 
in the utilities uh, section of the applications. So it's um, applications and then utilities and then terminal. So I'll just close this one. All right. Uh, so once you get your terminal open, um, you're going to need to use a package manager called Brew, which we're going to install first. So it's from brew.sh. It's called Homebrew. It's a package manager for OSX. Um, so all you're going to have to do to install it is copy this and paste it in your terminal. So once we get Homebrew installed, I already have Homebrew installed, so that's why I threw an arrow. But once you have Homebrew installed, you'll type brew install Lua. And with that, you will have Lua installed. Uh, and I already do, so I get an error. All right, so once you have Lua installed, you can uh, get started. So go back to your terminal and type Lua. So this will pop open an interactive um, uh, an interactive terminal for Lua. So I will just minimize this now and make this full screen. All right. So now we can get started. All right. So the most basic program you can write in Lua is the Hello World program. That's what most uh, uh, programming tutorials start with. We're going to do Hello World. So all we're going to have it do is print out the text Hello World to our console. So you're going to type print, begin parenthesis, begin quote, hello world, then we're going to have a quote at the end, an end parenthesis, and then that's all. Just hit enter. And you'll get hello world printed to your console. So as you can see here, it's really not that hard. Um, programming isn't some mystic uh, like magical thing that it seems in the movies. It's it's really not that hard uh, when you actually get down to writing it. You can certainly get more way more complex, which uh, you'll learn about later. But to get basic output, it's just simple as print uh, hello world. So now that we have our basic hello world function, let's get started with uh, using Lua as a calculator. So. Um, we're going to say print 1 plus 2. Notice that there aren't quotes with this one. And that's because numbers are different than strings. So strings are um, anything between quotes, between two quotes. And a string is any character of text, but it's treated as raw text. So if you put numbers in quotes, it won't be treated as a number. It will just be treated as text. Um, and normally you just put words in strings, but you also can put uh, numbers in strings, but they won't be treated as numbers anymore. So to be treated as numbers, for Lua to pick up that it's a number, you're going to need to just uh, put the numbers down without quotes. If we put, say print 1 plus 2, we'll get 3. Um, so just to show you what happens if you put it in quotes, putting 1 plus 2 in quotes will result in the raw value, like the raw text 1 plus 2 being printed out right here. It doesn't evaluate that expression. All right, so um, let's try uh, doing some slightly more uh, complex calculations. You don't have to put print out every time when you're in the console. Oh, wait, yes, you do. Sorry. Um, so print 1 plus 2 plus 3. Um, and we'll get six, and you can say print one times three, and we'll get three. Uh, so you can use Lua just like a calculator. You're going to end up doing a lot of calculations if you do game development. So um, all programming languages have some kind of built-in uh, calculator. So uh, next up, we're going to do uh, some ver work with variables. So variables, if you've uh, done uh, like uh, trigonometry or actually probably, yeah, yeah, algebra actually, just algebra. If you've done any algebra, you know that x, when you have a, uh, an equation and you're solving for x, 
x re represents some number. It's an unknown. But if you plug in a number for x, you can solve the equation. Um, so in algebra, x is just re representing some number. And in programming, you can have variables, which are just, just represent some value. So they can either be a string or an integer or a float, which is just a, in a, which is just a number with decimals. Um, so you can have variables represent uh, values. So let's create a variable. We can name it anything we want. I'm going to name mine var. And we're going to say equals, and we're going to have a string. So let's say our string is hello world. So now if we print var, notice the lack of quotes again, because otherwise it would print out, it would just print var. But we want the value of var, so we're going to remove the quotes. We get hello world. Var it can represent anything. We could have it represent a number. And we can actually use that number in equations. So var plus var plus three, uh, var plus two, five, var plus var. You can use it again. Equals six. Um, and you can have var equal an equation. So six plus three. So print var. It will print whatever six plus three evaluated to, which is nine. Um, so var variables can uh, represent values and You've noticed I've done a lot of addition with numbers, but you can do a kind of addition with strings as well, and that's called concatenation. So print um, x, whoops, uh, let's try that again. Print x plus y, notice it's in quotes. Uh, wait, it's, uh, you can't use plus, you have to use dot dot and it will print x, y. So what it's doing is it's combining these two strings together and making them one string, which it prints out. Um, and again, you can represent with that with variables. var equals this is a string. And var2 equals this is a string part 2. And if we print var and then concatenate it with var2, We'll get this is a string and it concatenates it with this is a string part two. Since you can concatenate strings, you can do um, you could do a calculation and then uh, put the result in a string. So let's say uh, var equals x, uh, five plus three, and then we can print in quotes the string. The value of five plus three is and you can put anything you want in a string. And we're going to concatenate that with var, and it will say the value of 5 plus 3 equals 8. All right, so let's get some user input now. Um, it's boring when you can't really interact with it, so let's interact with it. Okay, so to get input, we're going to use the io.read function, and I'll explain what that means later on, but for now, just uh, realize that that's going to grab whatever we type in and stick it in a variable. So x is going to equal io.read. Right? So we're going to grab whatever the user inputs next and stick it in the variable x. And you'll notice that there's not this uh, greater than sign, and that's because it's trying it's waiting for our input. So you just type in whatever you want here and hit enter. And if we print x, it'll say this is a string from input. Um, that's what we typed in. And io.read is smart, so it knows to convert numbers um, that you type in into uh, either integers or floats. So if we say uh, num equals io.read, we're going to hey, uh, select 4. There. We're going to type 4, and we're going to say print num plus 3, and it's going to result in 7. And we can also do it with floats, so 2.3 print num plus 1.0 and we get 3.3 .3. so that's how you get user input um, and up until this point we've been doing all this stuff in an interactive console which is great for learning things but when you want to save a uh, save a program you don't really want to do it in that so we're gonna type um, we're gonna just press control C to exit out of our Lua, uh, Lua interactive interpreter
All right, so we're going to create a uh, file on our desktop called test.lua. And you can just open this in whatever editor you want. Um, it's probably going to open in Xcode by default if you have Xcode installed. If you don't, which you most likely don't, um, it'll open it in text edit, which is fine. And we're going to um, put in our Lua file uh, some code. So our code is going to be uh, print. So we're going to get some input first. We're going to say, what is your name? Uh, and text edit is stupid, so it will try to redefine those with smart quotes. So we're going to have to turn that off because that will throw some major errors in. Um, smart quotes, smart dashes, get rid of those. All right. Um, so you don't want these uh, tilted quotes because they will cause syntax errors like crazy. We might have to restart uh, text edit for it to take effect. And let's hope that this doesn't. Yay, there it goes. So you want these straight quotes because that's what's on your keyboard. And that's what uh, Lua knows. So we're going to print what is your name? And then we're going to get some input from here. So uh, name, we're just going to create the variable name. And it's going to equal io.read and ignore text edit being silly. Uh, I'll show you how to get a, a real text editor in the next tutorial, but we're just going to use this for now so you get started. Um, and then we're going to print hello, and we're going to concatenate that with the name. And then we're going to say io.read, so we'll just hang until we hit enter, uh, so our, uh, our window doesn't immediately disappear. So just hit save. Okay, to run our file, we'll open the terminal again, and uh, it's probably going to... Um, this is going to require a little bit of bash, which is um, a shell that allows you to interact with your computer. So um, all you need to know is the ls command, which will list everything in the current directory, the pwd command, which will show you what your current directory is. Um, and what we want to do is go to our desktop. So we're going to type cd, which is called directory, desktop. That's all you need to know. So once you go to the desktop, type ls. So you can list everything again, and then type Lua, and test.lua. You don't, the ls is just so you can view it. The computer doesn't need that. You can just, if you wanted, you could just say cd, cd desktop, Lua, test.lua, and it will run your program. So what is your name? My name is Chuck. Hello, Chuck. It'll hang, and then we hit enter, and our program exits. All right, so that was a lot. Um, I'm going to let you just play around with that for now. Um, play around with input, maybe write a calculator if you want. And uh, next time we'll get into more complex stuff um, with the language. And I'll show you, I'll talk about program flow, which allows you to change the path of the program uh, using like if statements. So it'll check if values are true or false. Um, I'll show you how to create functions and loops. So uh, for now, just play around with Lua a little bit. Yeah, you'll probably want to play around with the interpreter for now. because If you're on Windows, I think all you have to do is double click on it and it's on your desktop. So you should be able to run it from there. If you run into any trouble with that, make sure to let me know and I'll try to figure it out in the comments. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. If you do run into any problems, either on Linux, I mean, on OS X or Windows, make sure to let me know. I'll be happy to help you out with that. Um, and uh, have fun programming.